In cryptography, SHA-1 is a cryptographic hash function designed by the United States National Security Agency and is a U.S. federal information processing standard published by the United States NIST. SHA-1 is considered insecure against well-funded opponents, and it is recommended to use SHA-2 or SHA-3 instead. SHA-1 produces a 160-bit hash value known as a message digest. A SHA-1 hash value is typically rendered as a hexadecimal number, 40 digits long. SHA-1 is a member of the secure hash algorithm family. The four SHA algorithms are structured differently and are named SHA-0, SHA-1, SHA-2, and SHA-3. SHA-0 is the original version of the 160-bit hash function published in 1993 under the name SHA. It was not adopted by many applications. Published in 1995, SHA-1 is very similar to SHA-0, but alters the original SHA hash specification to correct weaknesses that were unknown to the public at that time. SHA-2, published in 2001, is significantly different from the SHA-1 hash function. In 2005, cryptanalysts found attacks on SHA-1 suggesting that the algorithm might not be secure enough for ongoing use. NIST required many applications in federal agencies to move to SHA-2 after 2010 because of the weakness. Although no successful attacks have yet been reported on SHA-2, it is algorithmically similar to SHA-1. In 2012, following a long-running competition, NIST selected an additional algorithm, Kekuk, for standardization under SHA-3. Microsoft, Google and Mozilla have all announced that their respective browsers will stop accepting SHA-1 SSL certificates by 2017. Windows XP SP2 and earlier, and Android 2.2 and earlier, do not support SHA-2 certificates. The SHA-1 hash function SHA-1 produces a message digest based on principles similar to those used by Ronald L. Rivers to admit in the design of the MD4 and MD5 message digest algorithms, but has a more conservative design. The original specification of the algorithm was published in 1993 under the title Secure Hash Standard FIPS Pub 180 by U.S. Government Standards Agency NIST. This version is now often named SHA-0. It was withdrawn by the NSA shortly after publication and was superseded by the revised version. Published in 1995 in FIPS Pub 180-1 and commonly designated SHA-1, SHA-1 differs from SHA-0 only by a single bitwise rotation in the message schedule of its compression function. This was done, according to the NSA, to correct a flaw in the original algorithm which reduced its cryptographic security. However, the NSA did not provide any further explanation or identify the flaw that was corrected. Weaknesses have subsequently been reported in both SHA-0 and SHA-1. SHA-1 appears to provide greater resistance to attacks, supporting the NSA's assertion that the change increased the security. Applications Cryptography SHA-1 forms part of several widely used security applications and protocols, including TLS and SSL, PGP, SSH, S, MIME, and IPSEC. Those applications can also use MD5, both MD5 and SHA-1 are descended from MD4. SHA-1 hashing is also used in distributed revision control systems like Git, Mercurial, and Monotone to identify revisions, and to detect data corruption or tampering. The algorithm has also been used on Nintendo's Wii gaming console for signature verification when booting but a significant flaw in the first implementations of the firmware allowed for an attacker to bypass the system's security scheme. SHA-1 and SHA-2 are the secure hash algorithms required by law for use in certain U.S. FIPS Pub 180-1 also encouraged adoption and use of SHA-1 by private and commercial organizations. 
Shah Wan is being retired from most government uses, the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology said. Federal agencies should stop using SHA-1 for applications that require collision resistance as soon as practical, and must use the SHA-2 family of hash functions for these applications after 2010, though that was later relaxed. A prime motivation for the publication of the secure hash algorithm was the digital signature standard in which it is incorporated. The SHA hash functions have been used for the basis of the SHACAL block ciphers. Data integrity revision control systems such as Git and Mercurial use SHA-1 not for security but for ensuring that the data has not changed due to accidental corruption. Linus Torvalds has said about Git, If you have disk corruption, if you have DRAM corruption, if you have any kind of problems at all, Git will notice them. It's not a question of if, it's a guarantee. You can have people who try to be malicious. They won't succeed. Nobody has been able to break SHA-1, but the point is the SHA-1, as far as Git is concerned, isn't even the security feature. It's purely a consistency check. The security parts are elsewhere, so a lot of people assume that since Git uses SHA-1 and SHA-1 is used for cryptographically secure stuff, they think that, OK, it's a huge security feature. It has nothing at all to do with security. It's just the best hash you can get. I guarantee you, if you put your data in Git, you can trust the fact that five years later, after it was converted from your hard disk to DVD to whatever new technology and you copied it along, five years later you can verify that the data you get back out is the exact same data you put in. One of the reasons I care is for the kernel. We had a break-in on one of the BitKeeper sites where people tried to corrupt the kernel source code repositories. Nonetheless, without the second pre-image resistance of SHA-1, signed commits and tags would no longer secure the state of the repository as they only sign the root of a Merkle tree. Cryptanalysis and validation For a hash function for which L is the number of bits in the message digest, Finding a message that corresponds to a given message digest can always be done using a brute force search in approximately 2L evaluations. This is called a pre-image attack and may or may not be practical depending on L and the particular computing environment. The second criterion, finding two different messages that produce the same message digest, namely a collision, requires on average only about 1.2 times 2L, two evaluations using a birthday attack. For the latter reason the strength of a hash function is usually compared to a symmetric cipher of half the message digest length. Thus SHA-1 was originally thought to have 80-bit strength. Cryptographers have produced collision pairs for SHA-0 and have found algorithms that should produce SHA-1 collisions in far fewer than the originally expected 280 evaluations. In terms of practical security, a major concern about these new attacks is that they might pave the way to more efficient ones. Whether this is the case is yet to be seen, but a migration to stronger hashes is believed to be prudent. Some of the applications that use cryptographic hashes, like password storage, are only minimally affected by a collision attack. Constructing a password that works for a given account requires a pre-image attack, as well as access to the hash of the original password, which may or may not be trivial. Reversing password encryption is not made possible by the attacks. In the case of document signing, an attacker could not simply fake a signature from an existing document. The attacker would have to produce a pair of documents one innocuous and one damaging, and get the private key holder to sign the innocuous document. There are practical circumstances in which this is possible. Until the end of 2008, it was possible to create forged SSL certificates using an MD5 collision. Due to the block and iterative structure of the algorithms and the absence of additional final steps, all SHA functions are vulnerable to length extension and partial message collision attacks.
These attacks allow an attacker to forge a message signed only by a keyed hash, SHA or SHA, by extending the message and recalculating the hash, without knowing the key. A simple improvement to prevent these attacks is to hash twice. Shad equals SHA. Attacks in early 2005, Raymond and Oswald published an attack on a reduced version of SHA 1 to 53 out of 80 rounds, which finds collisions with a computational effort of fewer than 280 operations. In February 2005, an attack by Xiao Yun Wang, Yikun Lisa Yin, and Hong Bo Yu was announced. The attacks can find collisions in the full version of SHA-1, requiring fewer than 269 operations. The authors write, in particular, our analysis is built upon the original differential attack on SHA-0, SIC, the near collision attack on SHA-0, the multi-block collision techniques, as well as the message modification techniques used in the collision search attack on MD-5. Breaking SHA-1 would not be possible without these powerful analytical techniques. The authors have presented a collision for 58 round SHA-1, found with 233 hash operations. The paper with the full attack description was published in August 2005 at the Crypto Conference. In an interview, Yin states that, roughly, we exploit the following two weaknesses. One is that the file pre-processing step is not complicated enough. Another is that certain math operations in the first 20 rounds have unexpected security problems. On the 17th of August 2005, an improvement on the SHA-1 attack was announced on behalf of Xiao Yun Wang, Andrew Yao and Francis Yao at the Crypto 2005 Rump session. Lowering the complexity required for finding a collision in SHA-1 to 263. On 18 December 2007 the details of this result were explained and verified by Martin Cochran. Christoph de Canera and Christian Reichberger further improved the attack on SHA-1 in finding SHA-1 characteristics. General results and applications, receiving the Best Paper Award at ASIACRYPT 2006. A two-block collision for 64-round SHA-1 was presented, found using unoptimized methods with 235 compression function evaluations. Since this attack requires the equivalent of about 235 evaluations, it is considered to be a significant theoretical break. Their attack was extended further to 73 rounds in 2010 by Gretnikov. In order to find an actual collision in the full 80 rounds of the hash function, however, massive amounts of computer time are required. To that end, a collision search for SHA-1 using the distributed computing platform Boink began August 8, 2007, organized by the Graz University of Technology. The effort was abandoned May 12, 2009 due to lack of progress. At the rump session of Crypto 2006, Christian Reichberger and Christoph de Canera claimed to have discovered a collision attack on SHA-1 that would allow an attacker to select it, least parts of the message. In 2008, an attack methodology by Stéphane Manuel reported hash collisions with an estimated theoretical complexity of 251 to 257 operations. However, he later retracted that claim after finding that local collision paths were not actually independent, and finally quoting for the most efficient a collision vector that was already known before this work. Cameron MacDonald, Philip Hawkes and Joseph Pyprek presented a hash collision attack with claimed complexity 252 at the rump session of Eurocrypt 2009. However, the accompanying paper, Differential Path for SHA-1 with Complexity O, has been withdrawn due to the author's discovery that their estimate was incorrect. One attack against SHA-1 is Mark Stevens with an estimated cost of $2.77 million to break a single hash value by renting CPU power from cloud servers. Stevens developed this attack in a project called Hash Clash, implementing a differential path attack. 
On 8 November 2010, he claimed he had a fully working near collision attack against Full Shah 1 working with an estimated complexity equivalent to 257.5 Shah 1 compressions. He estimates this attack can be extended to a full collision with a complexity around 261. The sharpening on 8 October 2015, Mark Stevens, Pierre Cartman, and Thomas Pyring published a freestart collision attack on SHA-1's compression function that requires only 257 SHA-1 evaluations. This does not directly translate into a collision on the full SHA-1 hash function, but undermines the security claims for SHA-1. In particular, it is the first time that an attack on full SHA-1 has been demonstrated. All earlier attacks were too expensive for their authors to carry them out. The authors named this significant breakthrough in the cryptanalysis of SHA-1 the Shapening. The method was based on their earlier work, as well as the auxiliary path speed-up technique from Du and Pyring, and using high-performance, cost-efficient GPU cards from NVIDIA. The collision was found on a 16-node cluster with a total of 64 graphics cards. The authors estimated that a similar collision could be found by buying $2,000 of GPU time on EC2. The authors estimate that the cost of renting EC2 CPU GPU time enough to generate a full collision for SHA-1 at the time of publication was between $75K-$120,000, and note that is well within the budget of criminal organizations, not to mention national intelligence agencies. As such, the authors recommend that SHA-1 is deprecated as quickly as possible. SHA-0 at Crypto98, two French researchers, Florent Chabot and Antoine Du, presented an attack on SHA-0. Collisions can be found with complexity 261, fewer than the 280 for an ideal hash function of the same size. In 2004, Bitham and Chen found near collisions for SHA-0, two messages that hashed a nearly the same value, in this case, 142 out of the 160 bits are equal. They also found full collisions of SHA-0 reduced to 62 out of its 80 rounds. Subsequently, on 12 August 2004, a collision for the full SHA-0 algorithm was announced by Ju, Carabo, Lemuet and Jalbi. This was done by using a generalization of the Chabot and Ju attack. Finding the collision had complexity 251 and took about 80,000 CPU hours on a supercomputer with 256 Titanium II processors. On 17 August 2004, at the rump session of Crypto 2004, preliminary results were announced by Wang, Feng, Lai, and Yu, about an attack on MD5, SHA-0 and other hash functions. The complexity of their attack on SHA-0 is 240, significantly better than the attack by Ju Al. In February 2005, an attack by Xiao Yan Wang, Yikun Lisa Yin, and Hong Bo Yu was announced which could find collisions in SHA-0 in 239 operations. Another attack in 2008 applying the boomerang attack brought the complexity of finding collisions down to 233.6 which is estimated to take one hour on an average PC. In light of the results for SHA-0, some experts suggested that plans for the use of SHA-1 in new crypto systems should be reconsidered. After the crypto 2004 results were published, NIST announced that they planned to phase out the use of SHA-1 by 2010 in favor of the SHA-2 variants. Official validation implementations of all FIPS-approved security functions can be officially validated through the CMVP program, jointly run by the National Institute of Standards and Technology and the Communications Security Establishment. For informal verification, a package to generate a high number of test vectors is made available for download on the NIST site. The resulting verification, however, does not replace 
In any way, the formal CMVP validation, which is required by law for certain applications. As of December 2013, update, there are over 2,000 validated implementations of SHA-1, with 14 of them capable of handling messages with a length in bits not a multiple of 8.